thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Kevin Anyango, uh, the founder of Mutanda University School of Soft Skills. Uh, the platform uh, talks about those behaviors or characteristics that employers want or make people stand out. Now, today I'm not alone. Today I am with one and only uh, Nadia Abdallah. Nadia, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm excited now, actually, to be here. I should refer to you as, as, as a Honorable Abdallah. <laughs> well, I, I prefer Nadia so I that I'm more, you. you know, relatable. As the kid you do, well, Sasa, we do, wait, wait. Sawa, what I'm in Ambia, don't run away from that title. I said, okay, I won't. <laughs> no, no, you can't. And that's why we relate with you. Um, it's, look, I've got to tell people uh, that um, uh, when I was introduced to you, you immediately wrote back. So clearly you are approachable, uh, which I really appreciate, Nadia. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's important. It's important to be approachable, especially as a, as a young person who is in leadership, because, you know, we have to break this whole cycle of people looking at leaders as these demigods. We need to have leaders who are approachable, who are relatable, who... And in any way, that's the, the next generation of leadership that we should take up. Yeah. Look, I, I will jump straight to the point. How did yes. it happen to you? I mean, assistant minister at 2829. Uh -huh. How? I mean, you have a godfather? <clears throat> I wish I did because I believe if I have a godfather right now, I wouldn't be unemployed. However, God is my father. Why I'm saying that is because God is the one who got me to that place. And I always tell people, God gives you a space, then he wants to see what is it that you're going to do with that particular space that is given you. So for me, it was my work and my advocacy and the way that I maximized the, the space on social media. So I didn't focus on like showing what I'm doing or what I have, but I focused on what am I giving back when it comes to the society, when it comes to young people, but also the vulnerability that I showed there and then being able to be in different spaces and maximizing my, my, my opportunity. Well, and that's how I believe I got there three years ago. Well, well, well talking about uh, social media, um, look, I, I've just joined TikTok recently and uh, you find there are lots of interesting stuff in there. So yeah. what, 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 what does social media do to young people in terms of exposure, based on your experience? Yeah. Um, so social media can be your friend or can be a nightmare for you as a young person. It depends on how you want to work with it. The main purpose of having social media, and you know, when it started with the likes of Facebook, High Five, you know, 90s kids, um, yes, yes. it was to really just connect with your people and try to have fun with it. But then, then it grew to now something where people can now make money, people can now advocate, people can be activists, and people can also learn. So it's become an ex educational platform, it's become a financial platform, it's become a business platform, and it's also become a place where it, it's made the world smaller. Because you can be all the way in Brazil, like yes, the, the day before yesterday, I, I had a talk to do about global public leadership and it was in Brazil and I was in Kenya. So you can imagine what it does. So it's, it just depends on you as a young person, what exactly do you want to get out of social media? If for you, it's about entertainment, then well and good, go ahead, entertain yourself, follow people who are entertaining as well. But if you want to use social media as a source of exposure, then you have to be able to understand what are the different types of materials you want to put out there, but also the materials you want to consume. And so it just you just have to be intentional about it and you just have to know and identify, this is what I want. Right, well, use what intentional. Um, yes. So uh, just be very specific in yourself. Uh, oh. What, what really happened uh, for you to be where you are right now? I don't want to say here right now, I'm talking about the ministry, for instance. Uh, because Nadia, I mean, at 28, 29, some people don't know you are there themselves at that age. Yeah. Um, I, I think, to be honest, it was that, not knowing myself. So I grew up, you know, thinking of myself or like people around me saying I am a very um, naughty child. 
Um, I, I grew up thinking I'm such a drama queen and the things that I was doing because I grew up always wanting to, to be in spaces and stand out and wanting to talk and wanting to 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 lead basically and that wasn't a normal thing you know when when you come from our african spaces or you know and so later on as i grew older and i remember my my biggest transition and i tell people like the place where i actually grew up very well and became more stronger was when i moved to malaysia for my to finish my high school diploma and then to do my bachelor's because i got an opportunity to now live on my own and really like experiment different things. And I was narrating to someone the other day, I told them like people think that I just went whoop and I, I, I came into leadership and policy spaces, but I actually started with having a liking for fashion. And because of my communication skills and PR skills, I used to do a lot, cover a lot of fashion events. Then my first, I remember my first internship or my first job or trainee, training was, I was a PR at, practitioner but my clients were automotives they were aerospace and they were trucks so you can imagine then I went from that then from having to cover and and my communication skills with that then it grew and I went into writing now from writing that's when I discovered the different topics to do so then I was intentional about it I said I just don't want to be seen as a writer there's something that I need more. And so I really just perfected my soft skills because I used to go for events and I used to, as much as a lot of people think I'm an extrovert hundred percent, but I'm not. In fact, if you come with me to an event, you'll realize I stand at a corner first before I can talk to people because I get overwhelmed. And so I had to put myself in spaces where I had to now give elevator speech, uh, pitches instantly i had to introduce myself using just two sentences i had to do talk to dress the part and be who i am and so slowly by slowly as i acquired those skills each time i came back home for holiday i decided i wanted my community especially the women and the young people to also be like that well and so what, I mean, yeah no yeah. you've mentioned the word intentional several times uh those are just joining us i'm speaking to uh nadia, nadia abdala uh, based in Nairobi, Kenya, former assistant minister at Ministry of uh, Communication Innovation, correct? ICT, Nova ICT Innovation and Youth Affairs, back at then. At 2829. <laughs> well, no, you, you, uh, you, you sound very modest, but clearly, I mean, going to Malaysia is not really a normal thing for Kenyans. So, it's, um, so somebody can argue that you had the resources to put you into the space that you wanted, correct or not? Um, to be honest, I, I always tell people this, yeah. Um, we ca I come from a family where we are not at ECG rich and, you know, wealthy and everything. I just have hardworking parents who are intentional to invest in their daughter's education. One of the things that my stepfather always said was, at the end of the day, the greatest thing I can give you is education. But there were always terms and conditions. Basically, he said, I need to see grades for me to put my money where it's supposed to go. And I knew my, the only way for me to get out of Mombasa and get out of Kenya to be exposed was to make sure that I did that. And so I, as much as yes, I got a chance and I was able to be educated, but it also comes from my own um, hard work because there are people yeah. who are really, really wealthy out there, but they yeah. still don't achieve all these things. That's and so true. it's not that opportunity, yeah. So I like that. So just resources cannot make somebody be where they want to be. No, you, no. You have, you've got to be intentional, isn't it? Yes. And, and um, Nadia, so what do you tell people that are saying you know, you know, based on experience, you talked about uh, social media and you expose okay. yourself. Uh, so I, I can see people writing to me right now. Um, at Kenya Kuna Kazi, Kenya Kuna Kazi. What do you tell them? First of all, even I am unemployed. Let's start from there. <laughs> are even you really unemployed? Unemployed? Sorry? Are you really unemployed? I am unemployed. I have no job. I no, have you, really no job. But you're going to be re, 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 re employed? That's what they want? The no, that, that, that's not a guarantee. I see. I, I, just like everybody else, I, I applied. Yes. And I put in my application. 
Now, whether or not I will be re-employed, that, that I don't know. But what I know right now is I'm unemployed. And yes, it is true uh, that hakuna, of course, hakuna kazi za kutosha. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, uh, okay. Hakuna kazi za kutosha. But it does not mean that we should give up on that. When I was, when I was in government, I was championing a lot. I was telling people, young people a lot, that at the end of the day, hakuna kazi ya kutosha, kweli. But if you have a skill, you know, and this is something we all need to understand. Like for me right now, the thing that I'm trying to do is to see how I can monetize on my writing and on my speaking to create an opportunity. And so there's things like that. If you're able, especially if you're able to access the internet, if you're able to do that, and if you're able to read and write, work on yourself and try to find out what is it that I can do and start small, slowly, slowly. Other than that, you choose what other path you want to do. The government has so many interventions that I was uh, part and parcel of for the past, let's say, almost three years. There are different funds that are there. You just have to find out where are these funds and you have to have an idea. Right now, the current government, there's a hustler fund that has come out, which from what they are saying is that it is you're able to access it and you're able to get you know some money and start so if you can do that use that but other than that there are a lot of uh, non-profit organizations there are a lot of developing organizations there are a lot of cbo's yes there's yes. a lot of things i think sahi imefika wakati kuwa tunajua hakuna kazi za za ofisini let's let's we have to accept that Nobody is going to go work in the office. But if you can put in a bit of your work and try to go an extra mile, I personally believe you can get a job. I have seen people doing that because of their talent and because of their go-getter attitude. And they said, you know, Mimi, sifa, si, si pumziki. Nitafanya hivo. There's a, friend of, there's a friend of mine I know, a man's a small business. There's a sister of mine, a man's a pili pili. It's just, how do you how do, you do these things? It's, it's up to you. What yes. do you want so, to do? So you don't just sit at home and say, Akuna kazi. You, you, no. you want to be intentional, do what you want to do to expose yeah. yourself. Yeah, and I get everyone has different challenges, you know, I get that. Kuna watu wengine opportunities are very scarce, which is true, based on geographical factors, okay? But I still believe that if we try to change our mindsets and try to see how can we invest in more, I don't know, knowledge, more skills, more opportunities can come. Go online instead of like always watching YouTube, try to figure out what else I can get. So many scholarships that are given out, but you just have to put in the work. You, I, I tell people, what is your value addition? For somebody to give you an opportunity, what value addition are you adding as compared to somebody else? Nanda, you're so good. I've got to say that. <laughs> and, and clearly, you, you're a writer. And again, uh, those that listen to us right now, uh, Nadia has written, uh, two books now, correct? Yes. Um, so, you know, we are talking about somebody that knows what she's talking about. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I wish some, somebody were telling me now, somebody told me like 10 years ago, I'll be very fine in life. <laughs> uh -huh. Because me we, don't hear this, uh, no, Nadia, we don't hear this in school, Nadia. This, this is the problem. Um, you mentioned soft skills, okay? And um, uh, again, based on experience. So it's not just about academics, academics, that, that personal value that you mentioned, and this includes soft skills. So, how can young people build this kind of stuff, Nadia? Yeah. So let me tell you something. And this is what I've learned in even when, you know, soft skills are never taught in school, especially for us, you know, who are now done. You're never taught in school. In school, you're taught you have to pass exams because you have yes. to go to either college or university and then right. you have to get a job and then you have to get married. And then it's like it, it's like a book, but yes. you're not taught uh, what happens if some of you are not getting those jobs? What do you do? So it's the soft skills. And how do you invest in your soft skills? Number one, you just have to read about it. That's the first thing you have to do. Soft skills don't just fall out of heaven, to be honest, if I can be really frank. You have to read. Do you know what soft skills mean? And then as an individual, as a young person, why do you require those soft skills? You know? How are they going to be beneficial to you? So these are the things that you can read, number one. There are so many, um, there are so many online, free online trainings about soft skills, how you speak, your emotional intelligence, how do you react to certain things, how do you present yourself, 
you know, even the way you dress is a soft skill because you, you have to know how do I dress at particular place and what is the benefit I'm going to get out of it. And so number one, read, young people, read. Read about soft skills. Find out what it is. Number After you've done that, identify two to three key soft skills elements that you want to invest in yourself. Once you do that, then keep practicing. Soft skills are not things that you read today, tomorrow you'll get to know it. No, soft skills have to be practiced day in and day out. Then number four, really try to evaluate what is it that you want to achieve from these soft skills. Are you using your soft skills to run your home? Are you using your soft skills to try to get a job? Are you using your soft skills to try to start a small business? Are you using your soft skills for other people out there? So it depends. What are you trying to do with them? Yeah. So, no, so please, please carry on. I, I can listen to you the whole day. Please. I don't know. <laughs> keep talking. Um, Nadia, how do you, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, you, you, you mentioned uh, the benefit of social media. But at the same time, uh, social media can be detrimental, especially these trolls nowadays. Yes. Uh, the bullies, uh, you know, the people that uh, body shame. What do you tell young people in terms of fighting trolls in social media? Yeah. Um, I mean, I have been, you know, I have been bullied as well. I've been bullied when I was young and I've been bullied um, or trolled on, on Instagram based on certain factors. So number one, as long as we have this intense exposure in, on the internet, you're you're always going to be a victim of something. That's number one. So you have to always agree with yourself that no matter what you stand for, what you post, there are some people who are going to celebrate and agree with it. And then there are others who are going to have their own opinion. And these will be people who don't know you at all. You know, And that's when emotional intelligence comes in because what you need to do from there is you need to now say that block it like what i learned is that when things get too much i take a break away from social media and just step back and reflect and so i think we need to have that kind of habit let's have a conversation where it's okay to be trolled it's just how do you now deal with that trolling don't engage number one don't engage with people who troll you number two work on yourself your emotional intelligence to know that whatever they are saying to you, it has nothing to do with you, but it's just a reflection of who they are. And number three, you have to know that there are a lot of keyboard warriors out there. Yes, People yes. who just thrive from just talking bad about, about you or from making fun of you or from body shaming you. And so it's all about building that confidence and knowing that this is what I bring to the table or this is what my social media is about. And if you feel like this is not something that you like, feel free to unfollow. And if you don't want to unfollow, it's okay. Throw any baggage that you have. I'm not going to read about it. Yes, yeah. Well, as a person who have sat at the highest office, I mean, you work in ICT. So um, I'll go for those who don't know. Is there a law or a policy that actually can protect people that are being bullied? You know, like, you know, if I'm bullied, can I take somebody... Uh, can I put, is there a law that can, can protect me? I mean, you know, there are they are bills that have been passed and there are policies there um, that are that protects that actually state to protect. OK, but then I'll go back and tell you this at the end of the day, no matter what interventions are put, the World Wide Web or the Internet is so big and people can literally also change their, their VPNs or whatever, and they can still attack you. So as much as government has interventions in place to protect children from cyberbullying, um, to protect young people or people from, from their, what, how do you say, from the information being taken, you know, there also, there's also a social responsibility for yourself to actually protect yourself. If you have children, just limit the access of your children from the internet, that's number one. If it's yourself, if you find that you're getting a lot of traction that feels very bad for you, then please stay out of it. If you find that your information is being taken away or if someone hacks you, like I got hacked on Twitter, there are three to two step verification that Twitter itself has in place. Facebook, Instagram has in place. So it's up to us to also 
put an extra mile towards it? Well, see, I'm very conscious of time, uh, but I've got to ask, to ask you this, uh, Nadia. Um, if you talk about a mentorship, um, I mean, I don't know about you, but don't you think sometimes mentorship is overrated? Mm -hmm. Is it important? Oh. No, no, no. Mentorship is not overrated. It is important. What is overrated is how young people just go for mentors because of their names and of their titles. You see, the problem we have right now is that young people cannot differentiate between this is somebody I admire and this is someone I want to mentor. Someone you admire doesn't necessarily need to be your mentor. And number two, not everybody is a mentor. And so I feel like before you want to get a mentor or you want to be a mentee, ask yourself, what do I want to get out of it? And am I just getting this person to be my mentor so that when I'm in a conversation, I say, yeah, by the way, this is my mentor, la la la, but then you're not gaining anything from it. Those are the questions you need to ask. So you need to be, again, I use intentional a lot because you have to, you need to really know who your mentor is. What are you getting out of it? Because I have gotten to where I am because of mentors. And my mentors are not like big people. I can, like literally my late mom was also my mentor. You know, I have some people who are not even in big spaces, but I sit down with them and they guide me. And I think we need to do that. And sometimes people come to me and say, can you mentor me? Can you? But when I look at it, they don't really want to be mentored. It's more of, yeah, she's my mentor and just to talk about it. So that doesn't help, but it's not overrated. Right. So it's, it's not about names. It's about what you really want to achieve, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Um, look, where I am, it's really, really cold. So, <laughs> and, and I guess somebody just mentioned that uh, on the comments. Um, uh, well, so mentorship is, is important. Um, would you advise young people especially those are looking for opportunities uh, uh, to, to be vocal, especially in terms of governance and politics. Uh, you know, you know, you achieve a lot. Um, even without, before you became uh, a senior minister, you're doing still other stuff. You're very eloquent yes. uh, when, when, when it comes to uh, good governance. Now, yeah. some people say that if I, if one becomes, uh, if you become eloquent in good governance, especially if you talk bad things about the regime, you cannot really get uh, to the point where you are right now, for instance. So yeah. I suppose what I'm putting to you is, you know, politics and young people. Is it important? Yeah. Should you stay away from it? Um, so here's the thing. I'm also one of those people who tells people, listen, eh? don't, if you want, you want change to happen, don't insult a, a, the current sitting state uh, um, regime. What you can do is you can advocate. Okay. What I mean by that is that politics, young people, leadership, and impact. These are four different things. There are young people who want to be politicians. Well and good, focus on that. Be a politician, look at the things that actually affect your, your space or affect the number of people that you want to influence and then try to use a legislative way to go about it. Leadership, you can be a leader to influence policy. You can be a leader, a, a social uh, change leader. You can be a community-based leader. It depends. Leadership is vast. And you can be a leader in any sector. But it doesn't mean that a politician and a leader have to be the same. You just need to know how to differentiate these two. Then when it comes to development and impact, you want to be that type of person, advocate for it. Be an advocate about it. You see, I tell people, activism have, has gotten us to a very good place where we are right now. But from here, how do we now graduate from activism and going to advocacy? Advocacy is teaching people what to do next in order to make the people who are in positions of power to make changes. So it's like if let's say me and you are in a space of either you're, we are politicians or we are technocrats or we are, are policy influencers, we wouldn't really appreciate people who come to us and start bashing or insulting. Yes. But if, and then you'll start having resistance. I believe what we need to do now is state facts. You, as a young person, you're very, you're very vocal and you're passionate about something and you want to go into politics or you want to appear in parliament, come up with a pro program or a problem, a problem strategy. Then now look for the, the members of parliament or the senators who are in charge talk to them about it, go to parliament, speak about it, or use your social media, talk about it, go on Twitter. 
really bring out the necessities that you feel like are needed to be implemented. And that's how we keep going on. That's a sustainable way. Yes, yes. So as soon as we talk to name to Yani, you you know, you can be polite and also be for the bad stuff, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, you can still you can still call it out and say, I don't think this works. Yes. And I feel like and get people, get people to rally around you and see how you can make change because it, you know, there's power. There's power in really getting people and collectively stating some facts and saying, you know, we don't agree with this and let's have it like this and like that. Oh, Nadia, I cannot thank you now for your time. Um, uh, my last uh, question that uh, uh, I'm going to ask you is uh, confidence. Um, how do you build the confidence? And I say this because I see, oh, look, I'm a huge fan. You know, I've been following for the last few years. And um, I see what you post. Sometimes, you know, you dance. Sometimes, you know, uh, you're singing on the social media. Uh, where is that confidence coming from? In fact, before hopping on this call, I just did one, a, a real video where I'm dancing and then I talk to people and then I dance again. Um, <laughs> where do I get this confidence? Oh, so my confidence uh, grew, uh, like grew inside of me as years went by. Um, and this is because I was consistent in th the things that I wanted to achieve, the things that I wanted to do. Okay. And so... I was intentional enough and I said, if I'm going to do this, I need to be confident enough because I need to be relatable to people. I need young people to understand that you can still do something. You can still be a leader and still at the same time, show people that you are also, you also have a life. Yes. yes. Be because yes. right now, the, so the millennial and generation Z group, they do not, we, I'll say we, because we belong. I do not really want to relate with somebody who can who i cannot see myself in there yes 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 millennials and generation z right now they don't care about how many things you did the past 50 years it's no longer about the historical element it's about what are you doing for me now and how comfortable enough am i to trust you with my own responsibilities moving forward and then also the whole talking and dancing, it's just to show people that, hey, you know, as much as everything, I'm still this young person and I still want to have fun. <laughs> no, you, you are, no, you're very relatable to, uh, to be honest. Um, but at the same time, uh, during the COVID, uh, Nadia, uh, there was this trend uh, that came up where uh, the girls dance online. When I say dance, I mean talk online. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and... Obviously, people from boredom and some people, you know, get paid uh, from, uh, from from dancing. But what do you tell young guys that uh, intentionally go online uh, to track reviews? Yeah. Um. Here, here's the thing. Okay. I, you see, I'm a believer in. Um, I'm very liberal. I'm a believer in whatever works for you works for you. But I always remind girls, and I want to remind them about this. We come. We live in a time where there's evidence everywhere you want to do your twerking and everything and you feel it's cool, that's fine. But have you thought about how or where you're going to be three to four years from today? Because when you're talking about recruiters, they go through all our social media platforms to see what it is you're doing. When you want to apply for a visa, these days they go into your social media to see what you're doing. When you want, one day you maybe you want to be the president or a member of parliament, your people will dig up this stuff. And so you want to have fun, you can have fun. But there are some things that I feel like if you are really looking at growing in the future or going into a different direction, don't do it at all. But at the same time, I feel like parents need to have more time with their kids. I know we are, everyone's so busy trying to pay the bills. You know, capitalism is real. But I think that whole tradition you know like i grew up where um when my grandmother was okay um we would sit down with her and she would tell me about stories and that's yes. how we grew up yes. you know and then now it's more of i still go i was in mombasa my, my grandmother has dementia but i still sit with her and we still talk and a lot of people in the 90s were like that but now we go into the 2000s there's a generation where it's on the internet and that's okay but how as young as their older guardians, what are you doing to tell them that, hey, this is cool and fun and do it, but don't forget that social media is a very powerful tool 
and one day you want to become something. So it's just having really uh, real really, uh, conversations with your with them. But also, if you're a leader like myself, you're a change like yourself. Can we please also have candid conversations, like just randomly talk about the importance of using social media or technology, the importance of yourself, and all these other things. <laughs> you're very very good. Um, and this, this, this last thing, and I'll let you go. Uh, eloquency. You know, we're not born. Uh, uh, I mean. I don't know where this came from, but how do you build or how did you how did you um, become eloquent in issues, whatever you're talking about? You know, clearly you speak yeah. very well. Uh, you know, your, your, your public speaking is admirable. Thank and you. It's very important. People, people want this. The employers want people that can articulate, articulate it, can speak yeah. properly. Where yeah. to get this from, Naji? And yeah. how can people build them? Um, honestly, uh, since at the age of 13, and I say this a lot, my the two people I look up to was uh, Oprah Winfrey and the late Kofi Annan. Then I was very fortunate enough to have a family that, again, I was telling you like education and reading. So reading, I have books, like even right now I have like a whole tower. I'm not like a bookworm, but I read in order for me to understand and be able to learn. But then every time I also listen to other people speaking when I was young, and I wanted to be like that. But to be honest, it's also something that I was born with. And what happened was I realized I was born with. So at the beginning, as I was telling you, when I was young, I was just speaking out my mind. Then I realized as I grew older, this is actually a gift that I have. And so I worked on it. I read books. I watched videos. I, I followed Oprah's paths and late Kofi Annan's paths and every other person that is coming in the way that I feel like I can relate to them. And I realized that there's one thing, if I want to actually influence change, or if I want to be known and stand out, I needed to be very articulate with how I speak and the issues I bring up. It's, it's admirable. Um, you know, this is the last part I usually ask my guests um, uh, to introduce me to the next person. For example, your name was mentioned to me um, by the former Chief Justice and other people as well, and they made it happen. Now, I'm going to ask you this. Uh, you don't have to say yes now. You may not know them, but I've seen you posting pictures with these people. So can I ask them? You can introduce the, do the introduction. Yeah, sure, sure. Oh, <laughs> it depends on who it is, though. Uh, no, of course, but I've seen you uh, hang out with them. So clearly, they okay. must be your friends. So okay. there is uh, the comedian uh, Njugush. Njugush. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've never, I've never, I've never um, spoken no, to. I've got a picture with, with you and them. Yes, the comedian. Yes. Njugush, the, the yes. skinny guy. Yes, yes. No, I've never, I've never interacted with Njugush. That's oh, uh, someone and, else. Okay, and the second like, person, um, yeah. uh, Aziad. Never interacted with her. I've, I've met her once ah, at an event. Yeah. yeah, I've met her once at an event, but I've never uh, so you interacted with her. Yeah, I've never socialized with them. Like for me, I, I love comedy. Like even today, I'm going to watch Mamito. She invited yes. me for stand up comedy. So I'm going to watch her. And to the one who just recently won uh, Kalasha Awards um, from TMI uh, with Thai. Yes. You know, uh, Chris, yeah. Chris Kinan, right? And to, and to, that's his name, right? And to. Uh, and then Sulevali, that's his yes. name as so, Yeah. So these yes. are these are people that I've interacted with. Um, but you don't socialize. I do, but these the ones I've mentioned. Yes. I know them on a personal base, but as the Jugush, I've never, other than seeing them dancing and stuff, I've never yes. done that. I like, I, I, I'm not really. It depends <laughs> on who I am. I connect with. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's, let's do Mamita then, if possible. Maybe you can ask. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I can. To, after she has a show today at seven. So then tomorrow I'll give a call because today it's about her. Then tomorrow yes, I'll yes. text her. Uh, and then I'll also like uh, share your contacts. I'll share her contact with you and then you can talk Please. to her. She's an amazing, oh. she has an amazing story. An amazing oh, story. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. Thanks for being us, um, uh, Sinadia. I cannot thank you now. For those that are joining us, I've been speaking to Nadia Abdallah, um, former Assembly Minister. Oh, I'm calling you now. Just Nadia, you've got something to do, Nadia. 
No, for now, uh, uh, so it's still 2022. So yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. <laughs> I'm vibing. I am a former, you know, chief administrative secretary or deputy uh, assistant minister. Yes. Now from next exactly. year, you know, for me, branding is very important. Next year, I'll be a different, uh, former, former will still be there because it, that's a title that will never leave. Exactly. Um, but yeah, let's see what next year, what happens next year. Yeah, listen, I cannot thank you now for your time. Look, we've never met, um, uh, but you know, we, you've given me your time, you know, you've shared knowledge with us. And for that, Nadia, thank you very, very much. And I'm glad to be part of your network now. Thank you. No, thank you for reaching out and, uh, you know, good job with Mtandao Varsity. And I wish, I'm wishing you all the best. Oh, thank you. Have a very happy Christmas and see you soon. Thank you. Happy Christmas. Thank you. Bye. Oh, that was good.